when Congress is back in session next week and assuming a leader is eventually elected, what can Congress do? Well, there's a lot Congress can do to support Israel. There's a lot Congress has done to support Israel. But we're pretty much paralyzed right now by not having a Speaker of the House. And this is unprecedented in American history, of course, to not have uh, a Speaker like this. And we're not sure whether or not the Republicans can get their act together and even produce a nominee uh, for a vote this week. So it just highlights how important it is to have a functioning government here at home to deal and respond to these international crises. Um, what sort of support, though, are we able to give, given that we are currently in an ongoing um, or cur currently supporting Ukraine? How much more do we have to offer with the constraints already put on us there? Well, actually, this is a different kind of fight than in Ukraine. Um, this is not just a question of, you know, thousands of artillery shells uh, and the sort of force on force battle that you see in Ukraine. This is a counterinsurgency operation. And one of the most important things that we can deliver to Israel immediately is intelligence support. I mean, let's let's be honest here. This is a massive Israeli intelligence failure. Uh, under the Netanyahu government, um, that this this unprecedented attack could have happened uh, without any warning whatsoever. Uh, the United States, uh, from what I understand, uh, was also taken by surprise, but we have intelligence assets all around the world. We have intelligence assets throughout the Middle East. That's immediate support that we can provide the Israelis to help them in neutralizing immediate threats, to uh, finding the hostages, uh, tracking down these terrorists, and, and also you know, coming up with a real long-term plan uh, so that this doesn't happen again. <laughs>